Hello everybody and welcome to today's Future Abroad webinar. When deciding where to study in Australia, it's sometimes easy to only consider the major cities. However, outside of those city lines is a world of amazing opportunities, study, employment and lifestyle. So why not explore them? In today's webinar, you're going to learn what areas are considered regional and what lifestyle, cost of living and employment benefits they can offer you. Plus, if you're hoping to live in Australia longer term, we have insights on regional migration incentives and which visas you might be available for. First, I'd like to introduce you to our expert speakers. So firstly, we'll be hearing from Chris Johnston, Principal Immigration Lawyer at Work Visa Lawyers. He will be sharing some insights into regional migration. Next up, we have Sam. Sam is the International Coordinator at James Cook University. Sam is passionate about international education. Having taught at primary schools in Canada, Colombia, London and Singapore, she's now shifted her focus to helping older students on their international learning journeys. Sam is based on the Cairns campus of James Cook University and loves living in tropical North Queensland. So thank you so much for joining us today, Sam. Next up, we have Lani. Lani is the Director at Study in Northern Territory. Lani is um, part of Study Northern Territory, which is part of the Northern Territory Government and works with education and training providers, businesses and the local community to promote Australia's Northern Territory as an ideal destination for international students. Finally, we have Joanne. Joanne is the Director of CDU Global at Charles Darwin University. With experience of the international education sectors in the UK, New Zealand and Australia, Joanne is responsible for international student marketing, recruitment, admissions, support, compliance and partnerships at CDU. Joanne originally hails from Scotland, but is currently based in Darwin in the Northern Territory. Joanne will also be joined by a very special guest today, so you can look forward to that. So a huge thank you to all of our speakers for joining us today. Speaking of thanks, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's webinar, PTE Academic. For many international students, English language testing is one of the first steps in their study abroad experience. With PTE Academic, that step is made a whole lot easier. By using powerful technology, PTE Academic takes just two hours to test your English and provides accurate results available within two days. Whether you're improving your skills for study, work or migration, PTE Academic has you covered. Find out more about PTE by clicking the link in the chat. Make sure that we share that now. So a little bit of housekeeping in regards to today's webinar. There will be a live Q&A available, but we ask that you keep your questions for the panel as general as possible. And we recommend that you connect with your institution before arrival to have your questions answered. So feel free to reach out to any of today's speakers. We'll be sharing lots of links in the chat, so make sure that you have the chat open, make sure that you have that Q&A box open for whenever you have any questions. Today's session will also be recorded and available soon on the Future Abroad website. So if you're unable to stay for the whole webinar or you want to go back and re-watch any of today's webinar, you have the opportunity to do so. So again, to start off with, we're going to discuss regional migration incentives and visas that are, that are available um, with Chris Johnson. So we'll hand over to him now. So hi, I'm Chris Johnston I'm from Work Visa Lawyers, which is a immigration law firm. We're based in Adelaide, South Australia, uh, which is a regional location and we help people with uh, visas and Australian citizenship. Uh, we help for the whole of Australia and people all over the world. Okay, so um, obviously people come to Australia for to study for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the main considerations is the quality of the education and um, also they, they do have some migration related ambitions sometimes. So people thinking if they study in Australia, if they like it, if they like living in Australia, they might want to think about migrating uh, to Australia. So there are some incentives built into the migration system through the, the rules established by the federal government and also some of the state governments. And those incentives make it a little bit easier to migrate if you uh, study and live in a regional area. So a regional area is anywhere in Australia apart from Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. And um, so where I live, South Australia, the whole of Adelaide, is, um, which is the capital city of South Australia, is regional, as is the, uh, Darwin, Perth, Hobart. In terms of the incentives that are built in, uh, the first one is there's 
the points-based system where you can get points for different attributes towards general skill migration. And you can get an extra five points if you study for at least two years in regional Australia. And so that, that's something that might be <laughs> motivating. Um, there's also uh, extra ability to get a longer or an extension of the graduate visa. So you can get a second graduate visa and that can mean that you can spend an extra year or more uh, on top of the graduate visa you might have got. So it might be that you get three years or more. And this could give you more time after your studies to live and work. Um, and that can be significant because you might need a skills assessment and you might need to improve your English or work on your English. And those things can take time. So that's another incentive. And I think the third one, which is often difficult to quantify um, because you have to look at all the different states and different lists, is that the different states, the regional states, will often have easier criteria for the 190 and 491 visa. So it might be that you have to live and work in the state for a year or um, that you need to get a job in your industry and that might be the main thing they're looking for and that might be a lot easier than achieving really high points that may, might be required for uh, say Sydney or Melbourne. So there's some of the incentives that are built into it and I think the last thing to mention in terms of regional areas is maybe the cost of living. So it could be cheaper uh, in terms of renting um, to live in a regional area and that might be something that you uh, might want to consider. Uh, so there's some of the benefits. The temporary graduate visa, there's a couple of different types of it. So there's the graduate work and then there's the post-study graduate visa. Um, so there's these two different streams. I'll, I'll briefly explain how you access both of these. So the graduate work is available for um, vocational level study and also higher education. And the graduate work typically has a, a skilled occupation list. And so you need to study something that's related to that skilled occupation list to be able to access the graduate work visa. Um, and typically it would be 18 months long if it's granted, but it's been extended to two years. And there's um, also possibility of further extensions beyond that uh, due to COVID concessions. Um, then in terms of the uh, post-study graduate visa, then the post-study graduate visa is for people who have um, completed a degree level qualification or higher, and that would include masters. And it would also include uh, doing a PhD, and the length of that visa will be uh, depending on the level of education that you've achieved, but typically for um, a uh, degree level course, it would be for two years um, and um, uh, it could be for four years for a PhD. So the graduate visa is there so that once you finish your course, you get time to live and work in Australia. You might have already been working whilst on the student visa, but you've got time to live and work without having the obligation to study. and. During that time, you might be able to achieve some of the things that are required to apply for permanent residency. These would include um, English to a certain level and um, also uh, often getting a job in the area that you got educated. Skills assessment often requires that you have worked in the area that you um, have been educated in. And often, say if it's a vet assessed skills assessment, it would be one year of full-time experience in a closely related occupation. And so the graduate visa provides this bridge or opportunity for you to uh, get the relevant experience. And then you can use a positive skills assessment and, and English to potentially apply for a visa to stay in Australia longer, potentially uh, to apply for permanent residency. In terms of um, the benefits for regional, I think I previously already mentioned, but there is a second 485 visa which you can access if you have um, lived and worked in uh, regional Australia. So if you, if once holding your first post-study graduate visa, 
if you live and work in, Austra in regional Australia for that time, you could then apply for a, a further second 485. And that can give you extra time to uh, live and work in Australia and potentially line everything up to um, apply to uh, live permanently in Australia. So there are uh, several changes. Uh, the first one is that there is a replacement uh, graduate visa. This is uh, for people that have had to spend time outside of Australia during uh, the COVID pandemic and haven't been able to get the full benefit of their uh, graduate visa. So they can potentially apply for a replacement uh, graduate visa, which would usually be the same length as their original graduate visa, which is actually quite exciting because some people will be getting a double the amount of graduate visa and they might have only spent a, a short amount of time outside of Australia during that time. So um, that's the first one. Uh, the second one is that they have, for the graduate work visa, which is one of the two streams, up until uh, the uh, 30th of June 2023, you are able to uh, apply for that even if you haven't, if you've completed a VET level course or a, or a degree and you haven't done something that's on the list, so usually you have to do an occupation that's on the list, but it's anyone who's completed one of the, uh, a VET course with two years of study can then apply for the um, graduate work visa. So it's opening it up to a, a lot more people. Uh, that is uh, very attractive, uh, but it does have an ending date on that. And then the third thing is that recently there's been an announcement, there's been a skills summit which was held by the Australian Federal Government which had a number of um, industry representatives and peak bodies and unions uh, that participated. And uh, as part of that there were announcements that they're going to be uh, making the length of graduate visas double the length. Uh, so back for bachelor uh, graduates it will be increase from two to four years and um, for uh, people who've done a PhD it won't be doubled but it will be increased by two years so it will go from four to six years. Uh, so this this has uh, got a caveat with it or uh, uh, they haven't announced which courses and uh, which sectors they're going to increase this. So it's not an, an increase for all graduate visas, it's a proposal to increase the length for certain areas and it's most likely that will be in relation to what's been called critical skills. So I would expect it would be things like uh, medical courses, nursing um, and also potentially engineering, uh, things that there are uh, shortages of. So there has been a uh, increase in the uh, number of um, allocations that are, that are going to be made uh, for uh, skilled migration. This has recently been announced. Um, it's gone up to 195, so it's an increase of 35,000. And uh, within that, there's an increase of 9,000 for regional visas, taking the regional visas part up to 34,000. Uh, so there's 34,000 places available uh, for those that, that want to apply um, for the regional areas, which is a sizable amount of the program. It means that there is still a strong incentive to study in a regional area and that there is uh, a pathway forward if you do study in a regional area, potentially to access um, uh, permanent residency. Uh, there's, this has been done because of the uh, extreme skill shortages that are being experienced in Australia across a range of industries. And um, I would expect there to be more announcements and uh, more positive changes for migration, not just this year, but then the following program year, probably more again. Um, with unemployment at 3.5%, which is a historically low number, uh, and Australia hasn't yet recovered in terms of people arriving uh, from overseas, it, it's likely that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for uh, people who finish uh, their courses in Australia to get jobs for a number of years, not just one year. Um, so I'd say that these positive changes are going to keep being announced 
and that there's really going to need to be a lot of effort by the federal government to continue to encourage people to study in, in Australia and then to give them pathways forward. And in terms of regional, uh, they're going to have to keep uh, those regional incentives there um, so as to fill some of their shortages in, in regional areas. So, so there's an overall positive uh, outlook for migration to Australia at the moment. I'd like to thank Joe from uh, PTE from inviting me to be part of this presentation. I think that it's really important when you are uh, thinking about doing an uh, English test or migrating to Australia that you plan ahead and you have an idea of how you might have a pathway forward. And that, that includes choosing a course which is consistent with your uh, the skills and having a plan of how that might then transfer perhaps to permanent residency. And keeping all of that in mind, um, the regional locations and where you study are very much an important part of that. I know that as part of this presentation you've been hearing from education providers in uh, Northern Territory and Queensland and that their campuses are located in uh, regional locations. And so everything that I've talked about today will be relevant to those places that, and if you choose to study there then you will get some of these uh, regional incentives. So all the best with your studies. Um, so there were a couple of questions that came through the Q&A just then in regards to Chris's presentation. So if you do have any questions regarding regional migration and visas, please make sure to reach out to a registered migration agent. And again, if you do require English requirements for a visa, then you can check out the PT Academic website, which is linked in the chat. So to start off with our live presenters, um, I'd like to welcome Sam. Sam, if you are able to join us on the Zoom um, and we will take away your presentation. Perfect, thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Sam and I am the International Coordinator here at James Cook University. So today I'm here to let you guys know a little bit about what it's like to live and study in uh, Northern Queensland. So let me just get this going. So like I said, here at um, JCU, we have two main campuses that I'm going to be telling you about today. And those are Townsville and Cairns. Both of our campuses are located in tropical North Queensland. And this is a very unique area. So often when students are thinking about coming to Australia, they're thinking about, you know, the big cities like Sydney or Melbourne, or in Queensland's case, they think about Brisbane. Um, many of you have likely heard of Cairns, but maybe not Townsville. So I want to let you know what we have to offer in these regional towns and what JCU has to offer as well. So in tropical North Queensland, where our campuses are located, we like to say that we are sort of located in between the big three. One of those is the Great Barrier Reef. The other is the Daintree Rainforest, which is one of the oldest natural rainforests in the world. And of course, we have the iconic Australian Outback as well. And in between those big three, you can find JCU. So a little bit about our region and sort of the regional cities that you would study at here in tropical North Queensland. Uh, first of all, I just want to point out um, some interesting information about living in the tropics and what's so cool about that. We have about 80% of the world's biodiversity in the tropical areas of the world, 95% mangrove and coral reef-based biodiversity, and about 40% of the world's population actually lives in tropical areas all around the world. If we take another look at the map here, you can see our two campuses, Cairns and Townsville, um, are on the map there. That shaded bit of yellow is actually the Great Barrier Reef. So you can see how close to nature we are. And I would say that's probably one of the benefits of living and studying in a more regional area of, our, of Australia is the access that you have to the natural environment. I've already mentioned those big three, but you'll see in some of our, the photos to come just how close to nature you really are when you're on campus as well. So some of the benefits of North Queensland is the tropical weather. We're located between the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn. So we have beautiful tropical weather all year round. Even during our winter time, it's, you know, mid twenties in the, uh, during the day, 
Um, and in summer, it can get quite hot as well. Beyond those natural wonders um, and what the agent just before this already mentioned is that we also have a more affordable cost of living when you compare us to some of the bigger cities, for example, Brisbane or Sydney. Here in tropical Queensland, we um, have great links to the community in both Cairns and Townsville. We have lots of multi multicultural local communities. And of course, we have a big indigenous population as well. So we have the opportunity for you to engage with that community through our indigenous studies um, and really get to know and appreciate and respect um, the original owners of the land. The tropical climate and all of the green spaces that we have here are such a great way for you to stay active, to be outside, and like I said, connect with nature and have that outdoor lifestyle. And of course, part of what JCU's uh, stands for and part of Tropical North Queensland is the idea of sustainability um, and a really environmental focus in our lifestyles as well. So just to chat a little bit about Townsville. Townsville is um, where our biggest campus is located and it has a population of about 195,000 and it's the largest city in Northern Australia. It's a fast growing city uh, with a really diverse economy as well. So even though we're regional, it's actually quite a big city in Townsville. We've got lots going on. You can see where JCU is located um, and Magnetic Island is just a ferry ride away. The picture you can see at the bottom of the screen is from the top of Castle Hill where our students love to climb on the weekends. I prefer not to climb it. I'd rather drive up for the beautiful views, but you have that option. And even though many of you probably haven't heard of Townsville, even though it's a regional part of Australia, it's actually home to some of the biggest key scientific organizations in Australia. So if you are interested in anything to do with marine biology and marine science, we've got um, AIMS, so the Australian Institute of Marine Science. We've got the um, Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, um, Bureau of Meteorology and CSIRO. So if you are interested in doing research and you think, uh, if I go to regional Australia, I won't have those opportunities. Well, think again, you will have those opportunities. We do have these um, amazing connections to organizations as well. Um, and just on that note about research, this was uh, this just came out at the end of last year, but Townsville was named the second most prolific city in the world for research that is related to the UN SDG 14, which is life below water. And 52% of that research that got Townsville the ranking actually came from JCU. I just really want to point out here um, in this photo of our Townsville campus that um, just how much greenery there is. In the city, in a big city, you're not going to get the backdrop of the mountains, um, but you do get that both on our Townsville and Cairns campus. Um, and we have a population of about 14,000 students on that Townsville campus. In Cairns, uh, it is our smaller campus, but Cairns itself is a beautiful city. It's a big port for tourism, about 170,000 um, people here. And it's one of the only place, sorry, it is the only place in Australia where we have two UNESCO World Heritage Sites meeting. So that would be the Daintree Rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef. Again, a diverse economy um, and lots to get involved with in the city itself. One thing that students love when they come to our Cairns campus is that it's actually located in the Northern Beaches. So just north of, this, um, of the CBD, and it's one of the most popular destinations. For example, this is Palm Cove at sunset, and that's not too far from our Cairns campus. It's very accessible. And in this photo again, you can see that beautiful green backdrop of the mountains. There's you know, world-class mountain biking trails behind there. People go hiking during their lunch times uh, just behind the campus. And you might see just on that left side of the screen, um, there's even an adventure park where you can go bungee jumping right behind campus as well. So we've got about 4,000 students on our Cairns campus and about 10% of them are international students. 
At JCU, we are ranked in the top 300 universities in the world. And I do want to point out that we have five stars for our graduate employment, learner engagement, and graduate salary. And it was just announced last week as well that that five stars for graduate employment has continued. We've had that for 12 years in a row now, um, and we are the best in Queensland in that ranking. So from that, what I guess I'd like to point out is not if you go to study at, in a big city like um, Sydney or Brisbane or wherever, you aren't necessarily getting an advantage for your employment post-graduation. Um, JCU and lots of other regional universities as well are just as good as those big universities in terms of preparing you for that next stage of your career once you graduate. Just a little bit about what it's like to um, study and live at JCU as well. We've got a ton of support for all of our students who come here from the Student Association to health and well-being to counseling and mentorship. All of those are available for our students to help you transition to the lifestyle here. We've got a ton of clubs um, both on campus and there's a ton of opportunities off campus as well, whether it's you want to get involved in a sports club in Townsville or Cairns, um, if you want you know, something a bit more competitive, you could join the sailing club in Townsville as well. Uh, there's just so much going on both on campus and off campus, or you can become a part of both communities. One of our most popular ones, of course, in Townsville is the JCU Dive Club for that access to the Great Barrier Reef. And we are always running lots of fun events on both of our campuses as well to celebrate all of our international students and to help you have fun and integrate with the Aussies as well, because that's a huge part of your experience when you come to study in Australia. We have an amazing international student support team who are here to help you transition to, for example, an airport arrival service. They run the international orientation. We've got mentors. And of course, regular fun social events like our big international student gala that's coming out in November. I know a lot of you are probably thinking about uh, the cost of living and the cost of accommodation. So we have both on-campus accommodation available and we can also help you um, look for off-campus accommodation. When you're comparing regional to, um, to the big cities, for example, um, some statistics I was looking up before was that off-campus housing in Townsville is likely to be about 30 to 35 percent cheaper than in Brisbane. So if we're just comparing within Queensland, um, our campus and lots of different off-campus residences are located close to shopping centers. So everything you need is convenient. And I do want to point out that both Cairns and Townsville are big enough cities where you get the small town feel but you get all the big town and big city amenities that you would need to live comfortably. In Cairns, again, we've got on-campus accommodation as well as some off-campus. We've got shopping centers close by, and you can see just how close to those northern beaches we are with Trinity Beach just about a six minute drive away. At JCU, we offer almost every study area you could think of. Um, some of our biggest, our most popular ones are in marine biology, medicine, dentistry, um, business, anything environmental that is um, really big for us as well. And we've got lots of, like I said, connections to um, scientific research centers and institutes as well. So um, you would be well connected uh, for studying at JCU. We've got amazing facilities. We own a research station on Orpheus Island on the Great Barrier Reef. We also own the Daintree Rainforest Observatory up in the Daintree Rainforest with one of um, only 12 rainforest cranes in the world and the only one in the Southern Hemisphere. So that makes it pretty cool to be able to get up there and do your research. We've got lots of lead gold rated buildings that are um, you know, providing state-of-the-art facilities for you to do your studies, including our new technology innovation complex, which opens next year. So I hope 
I was able to give you a little snapshot about what it's like to live and study in the regional areas of Townsville and Cairns if you come to James Cook University. And I'm here if you have any questions in the Q&A um, or afterwards as well. Thanks, everyone. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, so uh, I hope there were a couple of people in the chat that were um, and in the Q&A uh, considering studying and living in um, Queensland. So hopefully Sam was able to answer any of your questions. And again, if you do have any questions specific to Queensland, make sure to ask them in the Q&A and Sam will be available to answer those for you. So we are now going to jump over to the Northern Territory and Lani is going to present a little bit more about the state. Lani, if you're able to join us on the Zoom, please. Hi, how are you going? Hi, Lani, I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you today. No worries at all. Thank you for joining us. We're really looking forward to your presentation. So, um, as per the introductions earlier, my name is Lani Batten and I am the Acting Director of Study and T. As someone who has grown up um, studying, living, and working, in regional areas across the Northern Territory for the past 30 years. It's really great to be here today and share a bit of information about studying in regional destinations and, of course, studying in Australia's Northern Territory. So a little bit about us. Our role at Study NT is to promote the Northern Territory as an ideal study destination for international education, we work with our education and training providers, businesses and our wonderful welcoming local community um, to welcome international students here to the Territory so they can dis discover new pathways to their future. We also host events and initiatives to support international students while studying, living and working in the Territory. But why study in a regional destination? As some of the things Sam has touched on, uh, we've got a really relaxed lifestyle and Australia in, in particular regional locations such as the Northern Territory, we're known for our relaxed lifestyle. Studying and living in a regional area will give you a fantastic um, opportunity to experience this Australian attitude. Many regional areas like the Northern Territory have beautiful natural environments that are easy to explore. Imagine being able to walk along beautiful beaches or go for a swim at the Darwin waterfront in between your classes. The Northern Territory has a lot to offer in terms of lifestyle, including the world famous Mindel Beach Sunset Markets. These are free and students can stroll through at their leisure, enjoying Aboriginal art and culture and foods from all over the world. There's an affordable cost of living for people studying in regional areas. It's generally lower than those in urban areas. Bigger cities in Australia have increased demand for housing, meaning that accommodation in these cities can be a little bit expensive. Cheaper accommodation and living expenses means you won't need to break the bank to enjoy and live a comfortable lifestyle while you study. Markets across the territory, as you can see in some of our photos, stock fresh fruit and vegetables at very reasonable prices, and often students can find foods in their home countries here. There are also loads of free events and activities here across the Northern Territory for international students, including multicultural festivals, food festivals, our Harmony Soiree, and our annual student-led kindness festival. There's also genuine opportunities in regional areas. Regional areas are home to a diverse range of job opportunities across various sectors, including healthcare, hospitality, and agriculture. In the Northern Territory, there are currently loads of job opportunities for international students and employers recognise and value the contributions that international students bring to their business. The Northern Territory government also supports employing international students. And we at Study NT currently have an intern uh, working with us from Charles Darwin University. International students in the Northern Territory also become incredibly engaged in the community. And a lot of our students volunteer their time while they're working and studying with amazing organisation. You'll find in smaller, more regional destinations, there's a greater community feel and it's easier to meet and get to know people. 
Regional areas allow greater opportunities for connections and opportunities to, for students to feel their home with, away from home. Currently, the Northern Territory has over 3,000 international students enrolled here to study from 70 different nationalities. And the Territory is one of the most multicultural cities in Australia. There are over 100 multicultural organisations here and they host events and activities all year round for international students. At Study NT, we also run a number of programs to welcome and support international students while they live and study in the Northern Territory, including our International Student Wellbeing Grant Program. Over $800,000 in funding has gone to support events and activities for international students through this grant program. And these have included wellbeing, activities, sporting events, and professional development for international students. Each year, the Minister for International Education in the Northern Territory also hosts an annual welcome reception, welcoming newly arrived international students to the Northern Territory. Uh, this welcome reception allows international students to connect with multicultural organisations, their providers, other students and government. Students also, as you can see, get the opportunity to hold some of our friendly locals. When you enrol in a course with a smaller institution, you'll likely enjoy smaller class sizes. This means you'll have a better chance of getting to know everyone in your class and developing strong relationships with your classmates and teachers. Additionally, when your class sizes are smaller, your learning becomes more personalised. Teachers have more time to provide individualised feedback and support to each student, which can often lead to better learning outcomes. The Northern Territory has 22 international education and training providers offering a quality Australian education. We have our university, Charles Darwin University, who you'll hear from today as well. And we have other higher education providers, vocational education and training, schooling and English language courses. What other opportunities are there for international students in the Northern Territory? We, Study NT, have our Study in Australia's Northern Territory Scholarship Program, and these scholarships are available to international students from all over the world to study in Australia's Northern Territory. These scholarships will help reduce the cost of tuition for students' first semester or year of study. Our friends, Charles Darwin University, who you'll hear from soon, participate in this scholarship program, and the closing date for 2023 scholarships for higher education is February, and for vocational education is January. More information is available on our website or by scanning the QR code here. Um, international students can apply for these scholarships now. We also have our international student accommodation grant. This is open to all students from all over the world and it supports students wishing to relocate to the Northern Territory. Students are eligible for six weeks rent provided at one of our purpose-built student accommodation providers, International House Darwin, located at Charles Darwin University, or Uni Lodge. Applications are open now for this program also through to June 2023. So why study in the Northern Territory? Here's some quotes direct from our students. Darwin has such a supportive environment. Students love the study culture, especially the high quality academic resources. And the journey for some of our students has been amazing. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you here today. If you have any questions about studying in the Northern Territory, please feel free to get in touch. There's some of our details there. Happy to jump on and answer as many questions as I can in the chat. Um, you are also jump on our website, join our mailing list, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and you'll learn more about studying in Australia's Northern Territory. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lani. And um, it was excellent seeing all those pictures of um, students enjoying cuddles from all of the Australian wildlife. Um, if that's not incentive enough, I don't know what is. Um, so carrying on this discussion of the Northern Territory, we are now going to jump into a presentation with Joanne, who is joined by a very special student guest. So Joanne, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having us. Um, so my name is Joanne Crystal. I'm from Charles Darwin University, and I'm very pleased to be joined by one of our international students, Kellyanne. 
Kalyani is from India and is studying Master of IT and Data Science. And firstly, I'm going to speak to you about some of the experiences that you can have studying at Charles Darwin University. Um, and then I'll hand over to Kalyani who can get through a first-hand international student experience. So Charles Darwin University is a unique institution located in a unique location. Um, we are the only university in the Northern Territory and we're very proud to be a dual sector university, which means that we offer vocational education, otherwise known as TAFE, and higher education from Certificate 1 all the way through to PhD in almost every field of education that you can think of. Um, CDU is the university in the Northern Territory and of the Northern Territory. And one thing you might not know about the Northern Territory is it's actually a huge landmass. So it's more than six and a half times the size of the UK. Um, we are home to more than 30% of our population are Indigenous. Um, and we're very proud to partner with Indigenous um, students and corporations um, to make sure that our international students have that unique perspective while they're studying alongside us. CDU strategic plan. So as of last year, we announced the new strategic plan, which was um, written in collaboration with our students and our staff. And we decided that our mission statement is to be Australia's most connected university by being courageous and making a difference in the Northern Territory, Australia and beyond. And the values that we have as an organization are courage, kindness, openness, innovation and leadership. And I think that um, you'll see that as I continue throughout the conversation today and how we exemplify these. So we have multiple campuses, mostly across the Northern Territory. Casuarina campus is our main campus, which is located in Darwin. Um, we are surrounded by lush tropical rainforest and we have a beach right nearby the university. We also have a campus in the waterfront in the Northern Territory in Darwin for our business and law students. We have a campus in Palmerston, which is for our vocational education students, uh, predominantly commercial cookery. And they have absolutely fantastic um, commercial kitchens and um, a fully operational bar at their disposal um, with a fully functional restaurant where the students get the opportunity to um, not only create menus, but also create all of the, the dishes and the recipes for the customers and, and serve as they would in a, in a standard working restaurant. Um, our final campus in the Northern Territory is in Alice Springs, which is in the centre of Australia. Um, and here, international students can also enjoy studying commercial cookery. Um, and there's fantastic employment opportunities as a result for them too. We do also have a campus in Sydney, um, that, however, that is not considered to be a regional location. So I won't speak too much about that today, uh, but students can study um, with us in Sydney in nursing and IT courses. So why choose um, CDU? Some of the um, benefits of studying in CDU and in Darwin are the employment outcomes. So as Larnie mentioned from Study NT, there are a huge number of employment outcomes for our international students. And our international students go on to have very successful graduate outcomes. Um, for example, our accounting and business graduates get snapped up by some of the big four, being KPMG and Deloitte, um, who have um, businesses based here in Darwin. Uh, we also have international students who've gone on to work for local government, which I think is fairly unique. We are very supportive. Um, so again, being a small university, we have um, a very supportive community. Students study in smaller class sizes and therefore they have easy access to their lecturers at any time that they need. Work integrated learning is very important at CDU. Employability is really key to our success. And most of our students will undertake a work integrated learning opportunity during their studies. Convenience. Um, so studying at CDU, you get all the benefits of um, studying in a regional location um, and convenience of being able to travel around the city is very easy. We have very accessible public transport, which is very affordable, um, which is a weekly bus ticket is seven dollars per week, which we believe to be one of the cheapest in, in Australia. We are also a leader in research and we're very much focused on doing research which has an impact. So more than 82% of our research is accredited at world standard or above. 
um, personal. So you have a very personal approach here. The lecturers will know you by name. They don't only just know you by name, they know about your family story, they know your background, and they really take the opportunity to get to know um, each of their students in the class. We're also a leader in online learning. Uh, we've been one of the first universities who has taught distance learning. And that was actually a huge benefit to our international students when the unfortunate uh, pandemic occurred and the borders were closed. Um, it was much easier for CDU and our students to um, move to online learning because we were already experienced and had the platforms available for that. Here you can see some lovely images of Darwin. You can see that it's, we're, we're a coastal city, so we're surrounded by water. There are many beaches for students to explore. Um, and one of the main things to share about Darwin is how multicultural it is, which is something that most people don't realise before they come here. So um, many of our population actually do not speak only English at home. More than 40% speak more than English. And we're very multicultural. So more than 100 different nationalities um, can be found in Darwin with more than 140 um, regional, um, sorry, religious, social and cultural organisations the students can participate in once they join. So there's a ready-made community here for them to enjoy upon arrival here. Um, Darwin also is, um, is a regional location. We're a capital city though, so we have all the benefits of a capital city while being in a regional location. So we have all the benefits that you would expect from a capital city. Um, World-class events, lots of employment opportunities, um, fantastic infrastructure and facilities but also with the benefits of being regional, that we have um, very minimal traffic um, and very affordable cost of living and a very laid back lifestyle, as Larnie mentioned. The other thing to share, which is um, quite interesting about Darwin, is our median age of the population. So the median age of people living in Darwin is 32 years of age. So we're a very young um, community here. And that is um, demonstrated by lots of students who come here to take the opportunities that um, of studying and also working professionals of the many employment opportunities that you can enjoy while living in Darwin. Um, CDU was actually the first university in Australia to um, bring a plane of international students back to study in Australia when the borders closed during the pandemic. And this was at the end of 2020. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is I believe this is a perfect example of the support um, and the lengths that CDU go to to support our international students. Um, we have been commended by um, not only students, their parents, other universities and insurance providers with regards to the level of support and care that we gave to students, um, not only before they departed to travel on the charter flight, but also in particular during their time undertaking mandatory quarantine upon arrival in Darwin. Um, so again, as I mentioned, this is just one example um, of how CDU goes above and beyond to support our international students. We are currently building a brand new campus um, called our Education and Community Precinct. It is a $250 million building and um, it is going to be open in 2024. So we're very excited to welcome all of the new students to come and join us um, in this new building. You can see here, this is a mock-up of, of how that will look. And it's located in a fantastic um, location um, right in the city centre of Darwin. Another benefit of studying in a regional location like Darwin is that we are Australia's gateway to Asia. So we're very close to Asia. In fact, it's four and a half hours flight to Singapore um, and less than three hours flight to Bali in Indonesia, which means that it's easier and quicker for people in Darwin to get to Indonesia than it is to get to other locations in Australia, such as Sydney or Melbourne. Um, we have many students who study with us from Asia um, because they, it is very easy for them to be able to access home and visit their families regularly. Here are some of our rankings. Um, this is quite a busy slide, um, but it might be of interest to you depending on um, what, what is of interest to you, whether it's employment outcomes, we're ranked very highly in the country for employment outcomes and graduate salary um, and employer satisfaction, but also in addition to that, um, our research ranking is, is very strong. Another um, benefit to studying at Charles Darwin University is our attractive scholarships. So just this year for semester two, we announced a brand new scholarship, the Global Merit Scholarship, which is a 30% tuition fee scholarship 
for the duration of study for all new commencing students and all programmes at all campuses. In addition to that, we also have the Vice Chancellor's International High Achiever Scholarship, which is a 50% tuition fee reduction. Um, this one is fairly competitive and a high GPA and an application is required for this. So many of our uh, many of our alumni are extremely successful, and this is just one example that I wanted to share with you. Um, ben is an international student who came to Darwin five years ago from Colombia. When Ben first arrived in Darwin, I, I know he doesn't mind me sharing this, he had minimal English. He studied English for one year. He then studied at CDU, his Bachelor of Accounting. While studying with us, he was elected to be the National Secretary of the Council of International Students. He also um, was represented in the Students Association and the CDU Student Council, as well as being a study NT ambassador. Upon graduation, Ben actually worked with us um, in the CDU International Office before going on to get a, a job working in the Northern Territory Government. And Ben is currently still working in the Northern Territory Government, um, only within a short period of time graduating from his studies. He is currently the NT Youth Roundtable Coordinator. And I think it's unique to have an international student to, to get such a successful job within the local government. But actually for us in Darwin and at CDU, many of our graduates go on to work in government. And this is Ben here. Ben is a co-founder of an organization, a not-for-profit organization called The Kindness Shake. The Kindness Shake is a student CDU, uh, typically majority of the, the people in Kindness Shake are CDU students and CDU graduates who formed a community and student-led initiative during the pandemic. And here you can see Ben on the CDU campus when they first launched, and he's with our former chief minister, um, Michael Gunner. And this is another example of a benefit of studying in a regional area like Darwin, whereby students have the opportunity um, to connect with lots of like-minded international students, lots of other migrants in the community, but also some really significant um, high achieving influential people within the territory, such as the chief minister. Um, and I want to share some more information about Kindness Shake. If you are an international student who's interested in coming to study in CDU and in Darwin, you should definitely join Kindness Shake when you arrive. Um, it's a fantastic organisation who are doing really exceptional things in the community to support others. So they initially started providing hot meals um, for people during the pandemic, not only students, but also international migrants. And they've now transitioned and they're doing lots of employability events to support students. Um, and so it's a ready-made community um, for our international students to join when they arrive. And that's everything from me. And I'm going to hand over to one of our students, Kaliani, who is going to tell you a little bit about her experience. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Kaliani and I'm from India and I'm studying Information System and Data Science Masters and in, I'm in last semester now. And my journey, with CDU was absolutely amazing since I started studying. Unfortunately, I could not travel because of the border restrictions, but CDU helped me right from the beginning, from first day since I came here for my transactions from online studies to offline. And even when I was studying online, I had all the support, not only for my academics, but also for my mental well-being from CDU. And regarding studying in regional area, I feel one of the best thing is I find the personalized classroom experience. Uh, my, my teachers know me personally by my name and we get personalized feedback and we have strong bonds with our teacher. And we also get opportunities to do the projects with government. And I have done two of my assessments for the government projects, which was an absolute amazing opportunity. And second benefit I feel is employment opportunities because there are fewer people to compete with you for your dream job, which you are chasing for. And of course, affordable cost of living, it's cheaper to live in regional area than in uh, metropolitan cities. And transportation, it's very easy to commute here in Darwin and it's very affordable and it's it, it saves lots of your time and you can of course use that time for your uh, mental well-being and for your self-care. And uh, another best thing what I like about Darwin and NT is the community. Being a small town, it's very easy to make connections 
and it's got a sense of belonging and people are very warm and friendly and you feel like this is a home away from home and fest all the festivals from across the world are celebrated in Darwin. So it's it's very multicultural. And yeah, it's, it also has less distractions. So you save a lot of money and yeah, concentrate more on your studies. And yeah, that's all from me, thanks. Thanks, Kelly Annie. Thank you so much, Joanne. And thank you so much, Kelly Annie, for sharing your insights into international student life in the Northern Territory. It was so wonderful hearing directly from a student and your experiences. Um, and yes, that kind of brings us to the end of today's webinar. It's been really jam packed as we've taken a bit of a tour around regional Australia. And we've also heard about the migration incentives that are available to you. Um, we've had a few questions come through the Q&A and also questions that have come through registration. Um, and they are in regards to scholarships. So really quickly, I just wanted to um, jump on to uh, Sam, Joanne and Lani. If you're happy to share uh, the relevant uh, links or, or where students um, or attendees of today's webinar should be going to, if they were interested in scholarships to these regional destinations if one by one you were able to perhaps share where they could go for that information um sam if we could start with you hi yep so um as i i think i answered one person's question about scholarships in the q a but um in terms of scholarships for any university all of our um websites are going to have a scholarships page so i would suggest that you absolutely check that out in cdu's presentation you know they talked about their um scholarships and jcu has similar ones to that as well in terms of an international excellence scholarship which is a 25 percent tuition fee reduction and we also have a vice chancellor's international scholarship that is um there's 50 percent scholarships available but there's also a few hundred percent or sort of full ride scholarships available there as well for our international students. So I will in just a moment pop our link to the scholarships page in the chat, but definitely check out each of the university's websites for more information. Wonderful, thank you so much, Sam. And Lani, um, I believe uh, the Northern Territory website has some information regarding international scholarships as well. Yeah, our study and tape website has um, information on our Study in Australia's Northern Territory Scholarship, as well as our student accommodation grant. So I'll pop the link for both of those in the chat. Wonderful. And Joanne um, and CDU as well, I assume, um, we'll touch on scholarships as well. If you're able to share a link in the chat as well, or any additional information you'd like to share with the audience. Yeah, so um, I shared a link to where all of our international student scholarships can be found. But just a reminder, we have the Global Merit Scholarship, which is 30% tuition fee scholarship for all new students um, commencing in 2022 or 2023. And um, that's for the duration of study for all programs at all campuses. Um, in addition to that, we have a Vice Chancellor's High Achiever Scholarship, similar to what Sam mentioned for JCU, it's a 50% tuition fee reduction um, and is competitively appointed. Wonderful, thank you so much. That brings us to the end of today's webinar. We will leave up a holding screen for an additional few minutes once we say goodbye to everyone because there are just a few more questions we'd like to get through in the chat and the Q&A, but we will sign off here. So a huge thank you to everyone for joining us live. Please make sure to check the Future Abroad website for the recording of today's session. And for access to all future events, there's also a number of really interesting articles written specifically for international students that are interested in coming to Australia and also additional information regarding English language testing. So again, a huge thank you to all of our speakers today. You've all been brilliant. Um, a huge thank you for giving up your time and sharing all of that wonderful information. And a huge thank you to today's sponsor, PTE Academic, supporting your English language requirements for Australia. Again, if you have any last minute questions, we'll probably hold on for an additional five minutes, but we'll just leave a holding screen up. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us and we will see you at the next Future Abroad webinar. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>